All right, today is the 29th of December. This is the Mycroft DevSync, welcome. And um, let's go ahead and just get started with uh, Chris Vare. What have you been up to? How are things going? Uh, I've been up to a couple of things. Uh, one was to get a bunch of <clears throat> data on a Selenium database with for awake words that existed in the old precise database. I've communicated this to Ken. He says there's enough there for him to do some of his testing and test, um, which is good. So I'm not going to do all 900,000 <laughs> just to save some time. Um, but I did notice that with um, a couple hundred thousand rows on that table that the response time of the UI has slowed a bit. So um, I'm looking into, uh, I haven't done it yet, but I, I'm gonna do some explains on that uh, query we use and see if maybe adding some indexes to a couple of those tables will help that performance a little bit. Um, it's averaging in the four second range um, to get that uh, API call to come back. So um, it's a little long, I think. And that's only with 200,000 rows, imagine with a million. <laughs> so, right. Uh, okay. But, so I did, I worked on that and I also have a document now, a spec document for um, the agreements flow and how agreements are going to be, um, well, how they work now and how, and in some cases, how they are going to work um, you know, with some of the new agreements we're talking about. Um, so that is done and I will uh, I'll be moving on to um, memberships uh, documentation for that um, later today and tomorrow. Okay. I'll share that document out in the dev team too, so people can take a look yeah. at it and comment on it. That's great. Okay, thanks. Um, I want to go to Derek, but he looks stunned. No, no, I'm just focusing. <laughs> Um, all right, so we've got uh, Kusol in the recording booth making new um, prompts for our, our new setup. So I was finalizing that. Um, well, I say finalizing, but really, I, we just threw a bunch of extra stuff in there um, to give us options because um, Gaz and I had kind of been going back and forth on, on some of it. So I went ahead and just made a bunch of alternatives and um, because relatively speaking, it's it's nothing to have say a few extra lines, and we can make our decisions um, later. Uh, I've got all the pieces in that startup script. Um, mostly, Gez has just been chiming in on that, but uh, it's a lot of work for us to do to to add all these extra little things, um, or to piece back together what it used to be. But I think it's ready for. Um, from scrutiny from uh, the rest of the team. So I'll throw that out on uh, team, um, the, the dev team chat. And then other than that, uh, we've got some things that came in uh, recently, the cameras. And so I pulled some of those out to test. Um, and Josh has had, got, got a couple things he wanted me to change on the laser cut design to make it like almost impossible to, to assemble incorrectly. There was still ways to assemble it incorrectly, so I've been uh, tweaking that as well. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's been basically what I've been up to today. <clears throat> okay. My understanding was that he wanted it actually impossible. Um, well, I'll leave that yeah, for you guys. The, um, the one thing that we, we can't do is the... Uh, uh, we can't do the if they put the bottom plate down upside down, um, then you can legitimately the whole thing will you can in, basically assemble it inverted, right? The whole the, all the exterior surfaces in and the interior surfaces out, like the I know this because I've done it. Yeah, if you flip yeah. every part 180, it can't be assembled inverted. <laughs> so, but, this it, is but yeah, the. But I think that we solved that by on the bottom etching in this side up, right? In in that that resolves the problem. So uh, yeah. uh, if you can read this, you're an idiot. We put on the bottom. So uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, that 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 resolves the problem, okay. and it's like the the XKCD cartoon. I 
my gift is the entire universe with the exception of one set of headphones, right? Like I wrap the gift in the entire universe and everything in it with the exception of one set of headphones, I wrap the gift inverted. So yeah, the, uh, anyway, but yeah, I'd like to get that cut because we are now running up against like rush timetables and stuff in order to ship. So right. sooner or better. So I can send that, we can send it off to the, to the cutters. All right. And I'm, yeah. Uh, and one other comment, uh, Derek, uh, as long as he's recording stuff, uh, can you get him to re-record the phrases that you already have, just in case there's any difference in tonality or whatever of the recordings? Um, yeah, we could probably do that. Um, yeah. See if, if, if you get Ranger School changed his voice to be deeper and more manly. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll ask to do that for sure. Cool. All right, uh, Ken, how's it going? Ah, uh, difficult. So I've spent the entire day working on debugging this Panacore images, uh, seemingly a uh, timing bug. Um, I don't know. I have more questions than answers. But from a high level, what's happening is that Precise is taking too long to load, and it's falling back to the pocket sphinx wake word. And... Uh, I haven't seen Pocket Sphinx recognize a Mycroft yet once, but <laughs> that's besides the point. Um, there's a, I'm inside of a package. We have a lot of packages in this repository that belong to Matthew, and they're in a Matthew repository or GitHub somewhere. I'm inside one now. It's a, um, it's a package extractor utility, and it calculates the MD5 checksum on the image and it compares that against the MD5 checksum that's up in the cloud to determine whether it has to download or not. And it's just taking forever to uh, calculate that checksum. And it's not clear to me if that's because somebody's writing to the file at the same time or what, but it's just, uh, it's got a 10 second timeout. I bumped that up to, I don't know, a couple hundred seconds and it's taking about five minutes to calculate the checksum. So what it's doing is it's timing out above it in the, in the wake word factory and saying precise is taking too long to load and then it's going to pocket Sphinx. But the calculation routine continues to run for like another couple of minutes. That's wrong. Uh, and it just continuously, regardless of what, tries to download and install the EXE every time on boot, which I don't think is correct, but maybe Gez can enlighten me on that. So I'm in the middle of this pretty good, uh, and I'll be in here until it's fixed. Okay, great. Thanks for that update. Um, that to me sounds like an issue that's just ripe for fixing the architecture, but I'll let you figure that out. Yeah, I just, uh, it doesn't make any sense why sometimes it would work and sometimes it doesn't. It's certainly not slow fetching the assets, it's slow calculating, and I don't know how it ever worked, which is why I suspect that there's some sort of timing issue where somebody's downloading and writing that file while the calculation guy is reading from it. But I don't know for sure. And we shouldn't have to do any downloading. That's the thing. Like. The if the system boots and all the assets are on device, it shouldn't have to download anything. Yeah, uh, that's the other problem is that uh, this guy was paired and running and everything was fine. So, you know, it's, it's, Let's it's tackle a problem. Let's that first then. It's a problem that surfaces if you power it down uh, and power it back up on first boot. And I think Ricardo may have discovered that if you shut down the I don't know if it's the voice service or the audio service and started again, it seemed to work, which again, makes no sense to me now that I see what I'm seeing. Um, we could have multiple issues, but I, I don't know. I'm about 10 hours into this and it's probably about a 50 hour bug. So I'll figure it out. <laughs> it's all, all right. Yeah, it's just timing and probably re-entrancy and who knows. So. Okay. Well, I, I, yeah. I would take a serious look at like, whether or not thing. it should be doing any of those massive calculations and whatnot to start with. Yeah, no, yeah. 
I think I at, at a high level, there's two things. That, there's one is that we we try and preload preload so it doesn't have to download it, as you said. Um, the other thing is that we've had on the list to change the way that Precise is delivered for quite a while because the current system, I think, is kind of stupid. Um, as in, it was it it works most of the time, but it's caused so many problems over the years um, or over the you know. So um, I think finding a better way to, to do that um, makes a whole lot of sense. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure, Ken, you're on top of this, but like it, why it would happen in the Panticore universe versus, but not in the, the other implementations is also interesting, but ultimately like not really important because the architecture should be such that we don't have to download any files on boot. I guess it should just work, yeah. unless there's yeah, I hear you. It's kind of timing related probably, but you know, and maybe because they're running in the system D services instead of just as applications, something like that. Gaz, is it supposed to always try to download the latest version on boot? Um, let's chat after. Yeah. Uh, All right. Thanks. I think let's get through this and we'll stay on. I'll say after the meeting, you and I can talk a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Anyway, that's what I'm working on, and we'll be working on for the foreseeable future. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Ken. Uh, so, Gez, I heard you were in a meeting with Panticore. How did that go? Um, yeah, it was, all right. it was uh, just looking at the fleet management stuff because um, uh, they, they went through a lot of that with Chris and um, already around the API. Um, and so, I mean, I got a high level of the API stuff, but I didn't want to go into too much detail there and um, more looking at, yeah, how we... Um, how we're going to manage all those channels and and uh, and release management and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, we just parked it at a good point for today, and we'll get back to it. Um, but uh, going to start using the fleet management internally so that we can play around with that and um, and probe it appropriately. Uh, so I'll. Give you guys a different link to use on devices shortly. Um, devices that that we're just using for end user testing, not for not for development purposes. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, I I created a new repo, <laughs> which always feels a bit dirty. <laughs> but um, as as we've been talking about, um, wanted to pull the um, the Wi-Fi stuff out of the Mark II skill, given that it's it's not limited to the Mark II, it, it should be used on on any future devices as well. So we now have a skill Wi-Fi Connect, um, which has all those uh, UI screens and and prompts and things for for how to set up your Wi-Fi. Um, I also added in a very uh, quick um, intent in there. So if you say test Wi-Fi Connect, then it'll um, it'll just run through all the screens. Um, quickly, um, just so that you can see see them all in order and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it still needs some work, um, and I still need to hook them up to the DBus messages for the network manager so that they're triggered at the appropriate times, but, um, but that'll make the device boot much prettier and nicer. Um, and uh, yeah, once we've got the, the Wi-Fi and startup script nailed down 100%. I've already shared the link with Panacore, but um, it's still there's still a little bit of discussion in there about the details. So I want to make sure we are giving them, you know, what we really, really want, not we think we want this, but it might change. Um, uh, so yeah, once that's down, we can we can start pushing on them to, to get that end to end happening. Um, uh, but I also uh, I had a good discussion with them last night about, um, you know, things like this bug that Ken's working on and, and that uh, we're not sure why that's what's going on there with the mic failing at the moment. And until we until we know whether it's core or whether it's something in, in the Panacore's um, containers, then it's everyone's problem. And we all need to have that as our number one priority. Um, and um, yeah, so uh hoping for some progress there soon okay um 
Is that something Chris Vera could help out on? Uh, which bit? Sorry. Uh, the the timing issue with the mic's not working. Uh, if um, yeah, if he's got a if you've got a rev four, I think the the limitation at the moment is we need we need rev fours to to test it on because there's like it, it none of none of it will work on my rev three. Um, so there's no way to, to like, you know, know what's going on there. Um, so yeah, if, if he's got a row four, then, then that would, then can help there. Um, yeah. Okay. You don't have a row four, do you, Chris? No, my row four is in a box, um, getting ready to make his way to guess. So, <laughs> ah, well, maybe we could, uh, wait a day and you could spend tomorrow helping Gez out. Because uh, it'll take a week to get there, at least, right? Especially with the holidays, yeah, yeah. it may be useful. I don't know yeah. another set of eyes on it. We got to get this going. So, if there's anything in the core that you could, you know, help uh, figure out, you know, you know the architecture as well as anyone. Yeah, I could um, assemble. I could take it out of the box, assemble it real quick, maybe without even the plastic. Just get the electronics all hooked together and um, take a peek. Yeah, that'd be good. That certainly takes priority over the um, documentation and the user management stuff. You know, we'll we'll tackle that next year. Okay, next I will year. start on that after this meeting. And Dan, if you want to help well, me. Yeah, maybe you can stay on with um, Ken and we can, the three of us can stay on and have a chat about what's going on. Okay. All right, great. Sounds good. Um, so the only update I have is that um, tomorrow I'm going to place the order for the SJ201s. Uh, we're going to send out components for 400 units, and uh, we're going to have the first um, uh, a test batch of uh, 20 made to start with. And then if those come back good, we'll have them spin the other uh, 380, and uh, we'll be on our way. OK, uh, any other things people want to talk about today? Well, the balloons might drop from the roof Two behind you. Or well, I haven't placed the order yet, so maybe uh, we'll OK. Yeah, yeah. Two things, or three things, I guess. So so one, when are we going to have uh, a couple devices to send to rollover? Uh, two, uh, when are we going to be across the line where we can set up devices in our kitchens and have them work? And then three, uh, Derek, you and I need to get the plastics done today and out on order, like today. So if you can send me upgraded drawings, I will cut them quickly and then put them together, double check them, and then we need to send them out. So uh, and the the bottom piece should have this side up on it. So um, did, was your uh, fake uh, SJ two hundred one? Did it actually dock to the Pi? Okay. No, I stopped assembling it when I realized you could assemble it backwards. I can do that if you want me to. Yeah, double check. Uh, is it docked to the pie? No, I, I, I don't know if it has holes in it or not. It should actually uh, have the holes in it. Yeah, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, small part. Uh, well, yeah, but, but the reason I made some changes was so you could access the Ethernet cable and all that better, which you need to have the pie in there to see. So I wanted to, someone to double check that for me. Okay, I will assemble everything if you can handle the reversal stuff, but I still would like answers to the other two questions. Uh, rollover date for shipping stuff to them that will work? Um, yeah, I'll get you that tomorrow. Okay, and then uh, uh, on the software side of things, when are we going to be across the line to, like, hey, we can start, non-technical people in the team can start using it? Well, that sounds like, uh, you know, both... Well, it sounds like we've got at least two software bugs that we need to figure out, right? Whatever Ken's working on, um, and um, and then the mic issue. Okay, so uh, then I'll, I'll since questions one and two do not have answers, um, it sounds like the answer to one was we'll have an answer tomorrow. Uh, two is there a Chris, Gez, uh, Chris Vare, Gez, uh, Ken, like when? Well, they're going to talk about that issue right after this meeting. So, yeah, if we knew what the right. issue was, then we could tell you that. Okay, I don't need to know when it'll be fixed. I need to know when I'll know when it'll be fixed. I'm, I'm right. happy to extract that away. Or, well, you know, 
you know. I guess the best way to answer that is you'll know as soon as I know. Yeah. All right. Keep keeping it on the Dev Team channel. All right. I'm starting to get. Uh, uh, we've been close for a while, so it'd be great. If yeah. The line. So, all right. I will get out of your hair then and let you give you time to go and do that. Uh, Derek, do you want to? Uh, I'll assemble this real quick and then get back with you right away. It's the old 80-20 rule. The first 80% gets done fast. The last 20% it takes forever. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. but we like the money. Unfortunately, doesn't work that way. It flows out every two weeks. So, yeah. Damn, all right. Cool. Money. Yeah. All right. Talk to you. Soon. All right. Thanks, all right. everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.